Hey guys, uh, welcome welcome to the video. <laughs> this is uh, directly from from my live streaming uh, live stream where I uh, do all sorts of stuff live. So uh, if you want to, you can catch that over at twitch.tv slash sifter studios. Uh, I had a question from uh, one of my viewers uh, yesterday about uh, my big template and I am planning on uh, doing a uh, video um, just going through that but the question was if I can show the process of adding a library through Vienna Ensemble Pro which is a software we could talk at length about uh, it is here um, we could talk a lot about it it has a lot of cool features and one of them is to send MIDI over uh, via network and get audio back. So uh, right now I'm at a remote desktop of a computer at the other side of the hall where I have a lot of uh, instruments already loaded and as soon as I turn that PC on uh, this loads kind of. So uh, that is great and dandy. So I want to show how I would add this and the whole process and so I'm going to add a uh, library called Albion 5 and I'm probably not going to show the whole thing but I'm going to show the process at least so I like to organize things so the first thing I'm going to do is add a folder by right clicking in VN Ensemble I'm going to call it Albion 5 uh, inside here I'm going to insert a plugin we are going to use contact right so this is now inside the folder <coughs> and I used a system where I uh, had multiple outputs and where the different instances of the contact is purple and the output in between is uh, has no color just so it's really easy to to see and a lot of this was uh, gathered from Jason Graves so again check out his YouTube channel to learn all my tricks that I learned from him uh, so I'm gonna rename this uh, just Albion 5 and we'll see how many tracks we'll need for that. I know I have some expression maps as well tucked off somewhere. So I think I'm only going to do the orchestra. We're not, I'm not going to do the loops. The percussion I have already in another uh, place. And maybe the grid evo. But let's start with the orchestra. And we're going to do this like in a orchestra uh, orchestra order like how it would be written on a page and so we're going to start with the woods <coughs> and we could do this uh, one or two ways we could uh, pack together all of the short sounds and all of the long sounds um, I think at this point for, for Tundra I'm just going to leave them in one one output and so this is going to be very easy and I'm going to guide you through it. So Woods High is here. I'm just going to load in Woods Low. And we can have up to 16 here. Remember, this is uh, it's up to 16 MIDI in. So Woods and then we do Brass High, Brass Low. And Strings High Main. And then strings high, soft and wild, strings low, main, and strings low, soft and wild. That gets us to eight, which is perfect, perfectly fine. Uh, we're gonna leave some room for. Oh, the that's right. This is this has some. Um, randomization built into it, so I'm not gonna include it. Um, my my philosophy 
about uh, Vienna Ensemble changed recently and I'm now leaving only the stuff that I never uh, change because it's going to save a lot on loading uh, and saving times uh, in different projects and I'm instead leaving those as disabled tracks in Cubase so I'm kind of uh, moving towards a hybrid between the modular template series that I already made some videos about and my own ginormous template. Okay, so this these are now set to one through eight um, MIDI inputs. I need to select uh, the MIDI in for Vienna Ensemble. And easiest way for me to have a look at what would be the next one in order is to move into the mixer and you can do that down here and i'll just look at the the, the last uh, contact instance which it was harps and choir and here that was number 21 that number there so i'm just gonna say 22 and uh, i'll show you very soon what i mean next thing is for me to go to a folder called buses now there's different ways of setting up the Vienna Ensemble uh, thingy. You could have individual outputs for every single track and and uh, Vienna can handle that. That would mean a lot of tracks in, uh, in Cubase. And so I settled on kind of trying to sort things a little bit before they go into Cubase just to make it a little bit easier. So buzz wise, output wise, uh, last one is 7576. So I am going to right click and do insert bus. That's going to make a new bus and I'm going to call it, I'm going to call it Albion 5. Easy as that. And the output for that is going to be 77 and 78. And if you want, you could route these. Uh, so I could I could choose uh, to, to route it to another bus and not to not to another output if I wanted to. In this case, I'm going straight to an output, and let's color it. Hello. Change color. Where do I do that? Is there a window here? I'm not aware of. There we go. So do this and there. And that one is that that's not the correct one. This guy. Yes. Great. Now I'm just going to change that color to something beautiful right <clears throat> and uh, so the output of the contact instance which is right here I'm not going to send to that bus that I just made okay and the only reason in this case for me to do that is just to have it make sense visually okay so I know that the sound that comes out from here will come out here and I have a volume fader and if I wanted to I could add an EQ here I could do a lot of different things add reverb and stuff uh, outside of Cubase if I wanted to all right that is basically what I'm uh, gonna have to do in in uh, Vienna Ensemble so I'm gonna head back into Cubase and this is my big template still under construction as always and right now we are uh, working with uh, this very cool software called Sherlock, which I'm undoubtedly gonna make more videos about. <laughs> but if I wanted to add Albion 5 here, I'm just gonna show you how, how I would do it. The first thing uh, you would have to do is to go from, so let's say we're here, you need to go to VSTi and find your instance of Vienna Ensemble Pro which in my case is this one this one uh, main ensembles is what it's called 
I'm not going to edit it, but I'm going to click this little drop down arrow and click activate outputs. And you can see I already have a lot of these activated and I've named them and they show up like this. That's great. Uh, but I, oh, sorry. But I need to activate 77 and 78, which is uh, the output for the bus that I just made. So I'm just going to click this and this is now active and shows up. So uh, we can show all tracks now and under VST instruments, these are located. And so I just need to find the correct one, which is main ensembles, open up that one. And here is my new output. Great. So let me rename it Albion 5 and just check that that is um, the same so for some of these I've made uh, more outputs for the Albion 4 for example I've made more outputs but for Albion 2 and 3 there's only one output so depending on what I'm going to use it uh, four, I'm making more or less outputs. In this case, we are fine with just one. And coloring it something. Great. Uh, next, we are adding MIDI tracks. And this is very easy. We're going to add just eight MIDI tracks. Great. And we can say, if we want to, we can say, Albion 5, like so. I'm going to select all of them. Uh, and actually, they're already routed, but they wouldn't be. They wouldn't be routed to the right thing. So let me just say not connected. And uh, to do that to all the selected track, I'm doing uh, Alt or Option Shift. OK. And now the, the way I usually do it is just to search for the, the number of the output because that's going to show me uh, basically all the Vienna Ensemble instances. And then I do Option Shift Main Ensembles. OK, now these are not set up correctly. So, so usually I save this as a track preset where I have 16 MIDI channels. Um, sorted from uh, MIDI channel 1 through 16 but in this case I'm just going to do it by hand 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 okay there's lots and lots to talk about with Vienna Ensemble so um, that might be coming um, or there's other YouTube channels and videos that are um, very descriptive where I learned these things. So if I now play something, I get sound. And what's happening in this, uh, in this case, uh, yes. I'm just going to check if you guys see my piano. Yes, you see my piano. So I'm terribly sorry if... Uh, you haven't been able to see everything that's on the bottom of the screen earlier. Terribly sorry. Um, now it's gone. <laughs> um, if I go back to this Albion and click the instrument so I can see the names, I can now write in. So my next point would be write in woods. And a little trick that I use when naming is I copy the name and then this little spacer with a space after. I copy that and then I say uh, hi woodwind and then I uh, click paste and then I say low woodwind hi brass low brass hi strings main I remember these <laughs> strings there was something about wild soft and wild soft 
and wild low strings main and then low strings soft and wild okay that's my next point and after that you know there's not too much to do uh, I have a very specific way to color things so I would color things uh, like this because these are ensembles I use the lighter colors for that and this and then high strings would be this guy this guy and there and there and I have a key command setup for making a folder that shifts space so that would be Spitfire Albion 5 and that would then have its own color that I believe is this color and then that would go into the ensembles folder okay uh, almost we're almost there what I do in addition is to take advantage of this little part here Uh, which is which can be linked to a output a physical output so these are MIDI tracks remember and they can then be linked to a physical output and enable you to add inserts to that output even though you're on the MIDI track physically in the arrange view and that is mind-boggling for me and a it's insanely good feature that um, I don't think too many people know about <clears throat> so the way to set that up is to choose an output here oh. and uh, the output is uh, now um, so you can choose whatever output you want you can choose an output from the instrument that the MIDI track is sending its MIDI data to so in this case when it's the Ensemble Pro it could be a lot of different outputs and since I've done that, that's actually why I named them as well, uh, like I have done. So now I can choose Albion 5 and then select the Albion 5, 5 output. And I'll go through and do that for all of these. All of these eight tracks. Like so. And if I now play high brass, first of all, you'll see the ensemble flashing because it's receiving data and it's also switching its view so that if I switch, uh, if I alt tab to the ensemble, the contact instance uh, that is receiving MIDI data is going to be shown, which is super, super handy. Uh, but I can have a look at this audio fader now and I can see uh, whether or not his audio is coming in and if I wanted to I could add a insert to that and I could uh, open it open the output up in um, in the channel settings and add sense and insert and that's also part of what I do in my template and we're getting a little specific here so we'll we'll see how helpful this is but um, this is my workflow at least so these are my groups that I'm uh, sending all of the outputs and all of the instruments to and all of the audio inputs if I'm doing live recording so all of everything goes into one of these folders basically and for this thing, I think we have an ensemble thingy, do we? Uh, we don't. We should. Ooh, something to something to add. So that's probably why I did 
now it's very interesting to me to have a look at where did I where did I route the Albion 2 and 3 I sent that to sound design why did I send it to sound design you may ask I don't know let's do that now as well so let's just be have consistency and then we can change the mistakes afterwards okay so we'll send this to sound design and then in addition to that I'll uh, add a scent a reverb scent and all of the reverbs are marked with a double X so that I really easily can uh, search and know that if I type XX space I'll, I'll only see the effects and we did SD extra one I think I believe and then I'll turn that on and send some splosh so we get some uh, reverb on that one okay now I can close down this so this whole VST instruments folder is something I don't want to see I don't want to see input output channels I don't want to see group channels I don't want to see effects channels and uh, I can show you this working now because uh, if I, I believe I have a uh, here we go Albion Tundra Orchestra I have a uh, macro that will look for this folder if I spelled it correctly let's see if I click it this is now going to show up and everything else is hidden so this is one of the joys of using software like this to be able to look for and and gather what I want from uh, from this template uh, now consisting of eight, almost 1900 tracks and being able to grab the synth that I want or indeed to go back to viewing all tracks so I think that's uh, my workflow for adding stuff into Vienna Ensemble. Uh, that's 22 minutes. So hopefully uh, you guys got something out of that. I'm live streaming here again on twitch.tv uh, slash Studios every Monday. And lately I've been doing it every night. So I'm having uh, a lot of fun making this template and finishing it. And uh, so more videos to come. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.